Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back through daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Hedera and HBAR. So let's just dive in and let's talk about a few things. So first and foremost, yes, the FOMC meeting is today. Yes, I'm recording this a little bit ahead of time. It is currently about almost, well, it actually is 3.30 in the morning at the time of recording this. And um, yeah, I think that the FOMC meeting is most likely going to cause a little bit of a drastic sell-off in the market. You guys might be wondering why. Well, I think that we will see the Fed pivot a little bit and we will see that 0.75 BPS uh, hike that you know everyone has been talking about for a little bit of time. Um, I think that this is actually really good though because we will see you know, a lot of these altcoins hit my buy targets and we will be doubling down on our positions uh, because going forward, I do believe that we will see an incredible opportunity for massive gains. And uh, you, I know that a lot of people will probably be like, well, what are your, you know, ape targets? I've said them so many times, but I just want to quickly, you know, tell you guys right now, it is basically around like the four and a half cent zone to five cents. And we could come down a little bit lower. We could even come down to like three cents. I'm really watching those areas closely uh, because I do believe that Bitcoin will have that massive capitulation event today um, within the FOMC meeting. So that's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting patiently. I have been averaging in here and there, but it's not like any major buys. I'm trying to double down though. So that is what I'm waiting for. Um, you know, targets on Bitcoin just into, you know, like the, the dollar range. We'll basically be looking at like 14K to 16.5K on Bitcoin. That's where I'm really kind of looking at. Um, that is where like we do see most of the demand anyways. Um, but why am I doubling down on a lot of my positions? Well, because first off, we are like right around my, you know, accumulation zone on a lot of these tokens uh, within my buy targets. And when we look at the market cap at roughly $900 billion, it's insane to me how undervalued this entire market actually is in perspective with like traditional assets. So I think that this is a perfect time to really kind of step back, be patient, don't FOMO in and start accumulating because I think that this is going to be a pivotal moment in time, similar to like March of 20, uh, March of 2020 um, itself. Sorry. And we do see here whether crypto is up or down, Hedera and HBAR Foundation keep focusing on building the network and its services, creating new partnerships and collaborations, supporting community startups or enterprise applications, helping to bring regulatory clarity to the industry. And uh, I definitely do believe that when we talk about like projects that really kind of set themselves apart from the rest of the crowd, um, it's really just kind of looking at the noise around the project. Are they still developing? Are they still building? Are they still active during the bear market, during this bearish sentiment? If you can answer yes to all of that, then that project is probably one of the most legitimate projects within the space. And it definitely is, you know, one that deserves to invest, you know, some money into. This is why I still look at Hedera as a solid, you know, investment because they are, they have been continuously building and growing and expanding. We're actually going to be talking about that in this video. Um, and there's so many more use cases to go live, like, you know, the coupon bureau, Avery Dennison, for an example, uh, the metaverse with the mall. There's a lot of things to really kind of look forward to. And I'm very happy to see a lot of those projects starting to kind of build out, give us some, you know, nice dates and things like that to really kind of look forward to. And also there's native staking coming to Adara as well. So like there's so much to really kind of look forward to. Now within building, yes, we have been seeing update after update from the HBAR Foundation, Merkle Science. We actually do so. We're proud to announce our latest partnership with Merkle Science, a crypto risk and intelligence platform enhancing Hedera Network participants' ability to identify and mitigate fraud and crypto crime. Alongside this, Merkle Science is committed to creating Hedera centric educational content on topics such as developing and operating a compliant crypto risk framework. And last but not least, together with you know Merkle Science, uh, we are focused on ensuring that network participants have access to best-in-class crypto uh, threat detection, sorry, uh, risk mitigation and compliance solutions. This, in turn, enables Hedera in its journey to be uh, to build the world's first mass-adopted public DLT. Now, the best part about this is like, in terms of like DLT technology and mass adoption happening. I do believe that we will see that once we do see regulatory clarity being ushered in. This is also why I say like, do not leave this market right now. Do not, you know, step away because when we do see regulations come to the space, that's where it's game over. That's where like we will see, you know, trillions of dollars being pumped into this market by some very large players. That's also where we will see like 
you know, mass adoption coming from like even the retail sector. So I really kind of look forward to seeing um, this market really kind of morph into this giant sort of, um, I would say, regulated space that's not over regulated to the point where like we still are seeing crypto continue to prosper, innovate further and uh, just like, you know, not stifling the growth of what crypto could essentially become and morph into. So I'm very excited to see where we, you know, do head down um, within this journey. So I'm definitely happy to see a lot more building happening around like compliance and uh, regulatory demand. So we also this year we're excited to announce our partnership with uh, DID Coding. Um, a platform founded by British YouTuber Bobby Stearman to educate the audience about different types of DLTs and innovative technologies as well. So this is great as well. Um, I think that a lot of these major partnerships are great. I think that this is going to give a little bit more of a educational viewpoint on things happening around um, DLT and also even like the adoption. I've been talking to you guys about DLTs for a very long time and uh, really kind of educating guys on the subject as we do continue to see like DLTs at the forefront of like crypto adoption and uh, some major trillion dollar plus use cases. And uh, last but not least, we did see HBAR get listed on BlockFi. Now the significance around this is that guess what? You can earn interest without any lockup period like sta uh, Stater Labs. Now the API, the API is not as significant as like Stater. But again, it's not locked up. It's 12%, um, which is not bad. But we also think that like when, when we look at like around, you know, this market right now, we look at like the backers on, you know, BlockFi. BlockFi offers institutional quality benefits to its users with backing from investors that include Valor Ventures, Galaxy Digital, Fidelity, Akuna, you know, Capital, SoFi, and Coinbase Ventures. And of course, you guys can see exactly, you know, why you would want to basically utilize this. In my opinion, we still want that, you know, native staking. I'm still waiting for that, you know, almost on a day-to-day -day basis just for it to be announced. Um, but also BlockFi is one to really kind of continue to watch for. I don't know if um, BlockFi is actually here. So it's actually not on this list. I don't know if it even is on like the lending section either. Um, I know that like... A few of these, you know, within this market, um, a lot of these major exchanges are even like, you know, institutional grade exchanges. They're not really labeled here, um, just within like the top 100. Um, but we do know that, you know, from the overall perspective on what BlockFi is and, you know, th the amount of followers that they have, you know, it's a fairly large, I, I would say like, you know, institutional grade exchange. Uh, there's over 150,000 plus followers on a BlockFi. So again, we're definitely paying attention to this because this is actually a pretty huge listing uh, for HBAR. So I'm actually very happy to see that. And uh, it definitely is, you know, something to look forward to within, you know, like even Coinbase listing, um, you know, HBAR, because again, we do see Coinbase Ventures being a backer here. But I think it's going to be a little bit of time uh, before Coinbase does list us. You got to remember that like Coinbase is just kind of weird with things. So um, with that in mind, let's jump in to the next thing, which is Starling Labs. So I've talked to you guys a little bit about this with um, Hala Systems. So they have this like alert where it's it's pretty much like to alert you about like attacks happening. Um, and we do see here like Starling Lab um, in collaboration with Hala Systems has submitted a cryptographic dossier to the ICC uh, detailing Russian war crimes in Ukraine with evidential metadata registered on Hedera and other layer one protocols. And of course, we do see down here like metadata for each piece of evidence was registered on. And of course, you guys do see all of them. Uh, the files were, you know, cryptographically stored and preserved utilizing Filecoin and storage. Uh, special thanks to everyone involved. Hedera is a proud to be supporting member of the newly created project. Um, it's Doka's Proof um, Alliance. I'm hoping that I'm saying that uh, name right, but which will support NGOs, academics, and companies driving and advocating for the open source collection of war crime documentation in Ukraine. Now, like I said, um, Hala Systems is doing some pretty big things. Like I said, they are basically building out like this. Um, it's like almost like an alarm sort of situation, if you will, for like, you know, attacks and things like that or like just emergencies happening. So pretty exciting to see that uh, this use case is definitely getting, you know, put to work and things like that. So it's, you know, great to see. But also, I want to talk to you guys about this article from Forbes as well. Uh, shout out to HBAR to the moon for this one as well. But 
Adara GC member service now featured on Forbes article talks about one of the major you know, pain points of early generation blockchain networks governance and shows how Hedera's model is more you know, super, superior than any, anything else in crypto right now. Um, and uh, yeah, they are saying like here, you know, DLT technologies basically or dig distributed ledgers um, are essentially social entities that need good governance to thrive. Uh, what do blockchains have in common with utilities? Um, and city councils, believe it or not, all three are social entities. And uh, they definitely are bringing up like a few, like for example, like Toco from DLA Piper. They're also talking about like Avery Denison's, you know, Atma.io, which I love to see. Blockchain is based in open source transparency and comes with a critical level of trust baked in. That's, you know, especially important in a post-ish pandemic uh, landscape marked by supply chain fragilities, geopolitical instabilities, and a growing range of cyber threats. So again, when we talk about things happening around this, you really kind of want to, you know, focus on things, um, you know, within this to like, you know, they are saying here, even like creating a transparent, accountable, reliable business network that transcends their own boundaries, which, you know, you could technically say like, that's exactly what Hedera has been doing um, within like, you know, every single move that they have been making to really kind of like, for an example, like further decentralization of the network and stuff like that, like, they really have been really putting a ton of work in. Um, now, they have been focusing on a few things here. Like they are bringing up like Bitcoin and Ethereum um, in terms of like forks and stuff like that. And then they are, you know, talking about like the city council, you know, as well. So like, for example, you know, ServiceNow is one of the 26 Hedera DLT um, operators of the Hedera Governing Council. Hedera is the leading public DLT or distributed ledger and governing body. It's designed to be faster, fairer, and more energy efficient than existing blockchains. In the Hedera DLT, the underlying data structure is not a linear chain of blocks, but a graph structure known as the hash graph. And they go on to really kind of mention like even ServiceNow uh, with the Now platform. Um, honestly, a lot of this... You know, I wouldn't even say like this is just bullish in terms of like the idea that they are talking about it, but it's great to see like Hedera getting a spotlight put on it from something like Forbes. Like Forbes is huge. I mean, I'm sure that you guys know that Forbes is a very large entity. I mean, 18 million followers on Twitter. Like this is what we want to see in terms of like, you know, media pushing Hedera. Like it's really kind of putting a spotlight on what Hedera is, what they are doing, uh, why their, you know, overall model is superior compared to like everything else within this market. And uh, it really kind of just proves to you like, you know, how uh, ahead of the game like Hedera actually is. Um, and then of course, like last but not least, I really want to just talk to you guys about uh, this. So we do see Hedera CCO join CFTC uh, commissioner for a deep dive panel discussion on the future of regulatory oversight for digital assets and the question of securities at Digital Chambers DC Blockchain Summit 2022. The reason why I bring this up and the reason why I talk to you guys a little bit about it is because regulatory clarity for crypto assets, digital assets in general, right? This is a pivotal moment. Um, not only just because of like the money ushered in, but the use cases that could be structured around this. Got to remember that Hedera has been working with Mtech. Uh, this goes back to May of 2021, where I first really kind of started to talk to you guys a little bit about Mtech. Um, they have been work working on CBDCs. You know, they've been talking about like mobile banking. They've been talking about like, you know, e-money and things like that for a very long time. And uh, we do see here, like this is from like just yesterday alone, talking about CBDCs, mobile banking and things like that from, you know, Mtech. But this comes at, a pivotal moment in time where we did see an announcement just the other day from the IMF, which I'm going to be talking to you guys about, but we do see the key points here. Central Bank of Haiti has recently published a new directive aimed at utilizing and regulating fintechs and digital assets focused on interoperability and security. Mtech and Haiti Pay are collaborating to implement a CBDC and mobile money solution in Haiti, utilizing the Hedera network to tackle problems of financial inclusion and stability. This is huge. And uh, we also do see Hedera's enterprise-grade security rapid confirmation times and governance model made it the optimal network to develop on. And when we talk about CBDCs, CBDCs basically launching on Hedera, this is the perfect thing to do from a lot of these, you know, central banks in terms of like perspective-wise. Because when we focus on what the IMF said just the other day, I'm sure that you guys probably seen this in my um, XRP video from like five days ago or so. Um, where we do see like consider the environment when designing CBDCs, IMF urges. The IMF is basically saying like, listen, proof of work concepts are not going to be utilized for CBDCs. So you could scratch right off the rip, you know, 
Bitcoin. Bitcoin is not going to be utilized for this. Um, Ethereum recently just, you know, transitioned to, you know, proof of stake. But again, you know, we, we haven't really seen the efficiencies unlocked from that, you know, merge. So to me personally, it's not going to be Ethereum either, uh, but it could definitely be a lot of these DLTs that, you know, really have the efficiencies that they need for CBDCs to launch on them. This is why I've always said like, pay attention to multiple DLTs, not just one or the other. So this is also why like I am sitting here and I'm like, dude, like look at this market, like look at where a lot of these altcoins are. And uh, we, we see the, you know, puzzle pieces falling into place printing out a clear picture for us all while everyone is too fearful to buy you know altcoins that are down like over 90 plus percent year to date for an example even and uh i'm just like sitting here and i'm like dude the amount of money that we are going to make off this market when you put into perspective like you know what's happening behind this the scenes of cbdc's by the way this entire article also has mtech talking about cbdc's as well like you you even see like what we are seeing now is a broader realization that if a cbdc is going to be you know an infrastructure it has to be a better one than what we have um in adoption to processing payments faster or sorry in addition to processing payments faster with easier traceability and trust cbdc's have to be energy efficient and again mtech knows exactly which one to choose here and, you know, energy and sustainability and things like that are going to be a major, you know, I would say focus point. Um, digitization is going to happen. And I really say, like, you, you got to pay attention to, like, what Hedera is doing within this market because it's exciting to say the least on, like, where MTech is really kind of positioning themselves as well. Uh, because, like, even from, like, the BIS, you know, for example, providing a cash-like digital means of payments you know, in light of reduced cash usage and an increase in private digital payment services is the most common consideration for developing a CBDC, which again, this will basically drop massive sustainability issues around like, you know, just payments and payment systems in general. Um, and when we focus on this, like you still need at some point in time to launch it on a network that could not only stand the test of time, but have the scalability options to be utilized within a CBDC infrastructure, which again, takes me back to Hedera. And it's not only like Hedera, like you look at like the XRP ledger, the XRP ledger is a perfect, you know, DLT to also look at. Um, there's other ones as well, like XDC, you know, XLM and things like that. So when we talk about this market, you could see the things that are basically lining up to exactly what I have been talking about for a very long time, which is, you know, digitization, and essentially tokenization of the entire payment infrastructure. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on if you guys want more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, I hope that you all have a beautiful day or beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.